Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. Okay, now we're going to talk with my man's Steve Wiltfong about 2020 quarterback recruiting. And he's basically saying, RJ, you kind of, well, you take a listen. So I want to know what is going on in Lincoln Riley's head when we talk about 2020 quarterbacks. And I know it's, it's my job, so I wonder about it. Another guy's job it is, is director of recruiting at 247 nationally, Steve Wiltfong. Steve joins us now. Steve, how you doing? RJ, what's going on, my friend? Nothing, brother. I, I appreciate you coming on, man, because this is one of my favorite topics to yell about. What do you think Lincoln Riley's going to do in 2020 at quarterback? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know because they the, the one guy that they've offered, right, that hasn't committed is Chad Morris' son, right? Right. And we feel good about Arkansas there. Least, right? <laughs> For obvious reasons. Been, been wrong before, <laughs> uh, but Chad Morris knows the kid's mom pretty well. Well, and that's kind of the thing that I was trying to get across to most folks is, you know, the top uncommitted quarterback in this class uh, that also feels like he fits Oklahoma's Haynes King. And it's kind of, uh, you, you had some things to say earlier on the uh, the 247 Recruiting Podcast about Haynes King. And, you, I mean, you were basically given your low-confidence pick. But just from an evaluation standpoint, how do you feel about him? Well, we love Haynes King. You know, obviously the undefeated state champion quarterback last year that completed it at a high percentage for a lot of yards and didn't turn the ball over. And the multi-sport standout. His dad's his high school coach, so you, you like the intangibles with him. But before – I'm not stressing over Lincoln Riley and quarterbacks in Oklahoma. I mean, the last two starters went number one in the draft, and I guess he inherited them in a way, but they hit on the transfer market. You got Jalen Hurts in there, and you land the best quarterback in the country, in my opinion, last year, and Spencer Rattler. I'm I'm not in any kind of panic about what's going on with quarterbacks at, at Oklahoma right now. Well, I mean, you you bring up some very good points that have been brought up here locally many times over, which is, hey, RG, you're crazy for wondering aloud what Lincoln Riley's going to do at quarterback. And I, of all people, understand that. But in this new age where the transport portal seems like a good way to get a quarterback, and we're also seeing, you know, with regularity, two quarterbacks go in one class, I just wonder, you know, is it is it possible that Lincoln could say, you know what, we don't really need – a 2020 quarterback. Well, I think if I look at if I look at the roster right now, you got what you got: Jalen Hurts, you got Tanner Mordecai, who's promising. Has Tanner Mordecai been promising? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Close, right. So you got Tanner Mordecai, who had a really big senior year himself, and, and then you have Spencer Rattler. So you have three guys uh, on the roster. I think that. They need to take one this cycle uh, from a number standpoint. I don't know what their plan is or, or who they're who they're going after, or, or maybe they land the Morris kid. Um, you know, the crystal ball says otherwise on twenty four seven Sports. Um, but from a number standpoint, I definitely get your concern. I just it's hard for me to panic about it right now. You know, uh, no, and and that I do I do think that they would be transfer destination you if need be but at some point they're going to not, look they, they've only taken they, they took Jalen Hurts kind of maybe because Tanner's young and, and Spencer hasn't even taken a college snap yet uh, and, and, and really Tanner's a red shirt too so neither of them have so you need to get some experience in your room and, and get a guy that's played under the lights um, but, but you're hopeful that Tanner or, or Spencer gets developed, and then, yeah, I think they need to take one for numbers so they can have three on scholarship next year. Right. And, and you got to figure Oklahoma's going to win win a lot of these games big, so Tanner and or Spencer, they're going to get some, They're going to get an opportunity to play this year. And with the new redshirt rule, you can play Spencer in four games and not lose a year if, if need be, although we ranked them in a position where I don't think he needs five years. And that's that's the worry also is can you hold on to both of them in the age of the portal when a lot of kids just they want to play in their first two, three years and you might yeah. have other situ- – like you saw Austin Kendall. He said, you know what, I'm not going to stay here and compete with Jalen Hurts. I'm going to go where I'm going to play. I did my time. I want to go. I want to be a starter. I also was looking at 
On the flip side of that, though, RJ, Oklahoma is the one place where Lincoln Riley can point to and say, Kyler Murray waited his turn, went, got drafted, even high, he got drafted number one overall, won the Heisman Trophy himself. So there is, he can point to that and say, there is um, some upside to waiting your turn here. And then it's up to, and it sounds by all accounts, he's a player's coach. And, and, and those guys are bought in and waited because there, the grass wasn't greener for Kyler to go elsewhere, took a team to the playoffs, and and really outside of a horrendous first quarter, they were in that ball game, and, and uh, it is what it is. But um, they weren't outclassed; they just didn't play well early. And, and so, um, I just think they need to find someone for from a number standpoint. But I still like the talent in the room, one through three. Is really good, and and you you're doing a very good job of making the listeners feel very good about what OU is doing at quarterback. And I wanted to just one last question before you go. 2021 for me looks really good. Brock Vandegrift released the top six earlier this morning. Uh, he has an OU offer. Another guy that just kind of popped up, took a visit that I really enjoyed just watching this huddle film was Caleb Williams. If you give just short evaluation about those two guys. Well, Brock Vandergriff's the only guy that Oklahoma's offered right now in 2021, so he's obviously the Sooners' top target right now, and and uh, he's he's kind of the prototype um, frame for the position of guys we're seeing now in that six two six three range with a little bit of a thickness to him. Um, and uh, you yeah, know, I had a really good sophomore year, and then showed a lot of trait. And he's a guy that's got dual threat ability, which you have to have. Uh, in Lincoln Riley's offense. And I saw Caleb Williams myself uh, a couple weeks ago at the opening regional and thought he was terrific and um, would be a dynamic player at Oklahoma as well. He's the number two dual-threat quarterback in the country in our our rankings. uh, He's visiting Georgia this week. He's a guy that he plays at Washington, D.C., Gonzaga, one of the most competitive high school football players. divisions out there and, and the, the opposing coaches wave about Caleb Williams. So um, he's, he, his recruitment, I think he was very high on Clemson at one point. They get DJ Ugalili in 2020. I, I don't think that um, Clemson is in a great spot anymore. Ohio State was in a really good spot for Caleb Williams, but they already have 2021 quarterback Kyle McCord. Uh, we'll see if Oklahoma pursues Caleb. They're obviously in it for Vandegrift, and we'll see what happens. That is Steve Wiltfong, Director of Recruiting for 247 Sports. Also can say DJ's last name correctly. I, it takes me practice. I still screw it up. Steve, thanks so much for this, man. Y'all take care. RJ, I appreciate you having me on. We'll see you guys over on uh, OU Insider. Yeah, man. There, there he is, plugging it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. bye-bye, guys. Thanks.